تمام عليكم السلام ورحمه وبركاته اه سامعيني دكتوره ليلى ايوه اه زي حضرتك معاكي دكتوره ايمان حاتم اه اهلا وسهلا اهلا بحضرتك عندنا شويه لسه بنحاول نجرب التوصيلات وكده بس بحاول اشغل الكاميرا اوكي فمش عارفه احنا معانا الباحثين ما انا طلبت دخل... منهم يكتبوا على الشات بس عشان نبقى عارفين هم مين عشان في ناس بتبقى داخله باسم تاني في في هند رقم خمسه البحث رقم خمسه مش عارفه مين تاني بقى في وسام بس انا مش عارفه هي بحث او طيب البحث الاولاني تقى مهندسه موجوده تمام مش موجوده معانا حضرتك سامعاها؟ ايوه لا هي مش اسمها مش موجود معانا هي الفكره ان انا مش ما فيش غير هند ووسام هو وسام وسام انا انا مستمع لان امبارح عملت اون سايت ما عملتش اون لاين انا مستمع يعني مش مهندس و... اه وسام اه اه تمام اه مهندس وسام اه اهلا بحضرتك أيوة. اوكي طيب اهلا بيك اه يعني حضرتك عملت امبارح خلاص طب احنا كده ما عندناش عند المهندسة هند بس من ال من الخمس أسامي اللي موجودة في الليست طب هند أنت جاهزة تعرضي؟ أنا مش سامعة هند هي هند عاملة ميوت؟ لا لا أنا هو معاكم بس يعني قدامي بس 10 دقايق بس في حاجة في الآخر في البرزنتيشن ضربت فهظبطها بس تمام هل في وسيلة إذا نعرف بقية الباحثين هيعرضوا ولا لأ ولا دكتورة إيمان؟ أي دكتورة مع حضرتك لحظة واحدة بس هشوف مع باشمهندسة شيماء إحنا معانا اللي هو البحث اللي هو باشمهندسة شيماء موجودين بس هم مش جاهزين دلوقتي برضو هو دكتور ألكسندر معانا ولا؟ لا مفيش حد دخل اه اه طيب لا هو المفروض هي هي هيدخل هيدخل معانا دلوقتي طب يعني نستنى بقى 10 دقائق مثلا وبعدين نرجع تاني عشان طيب ممكن 10 دقائق عشان نرتب بس تمام. لو بقيه الباحثين خلاص و... اوكي تمام انا مع حضرتك حاضر خلاص اوكي دكتورة ليلى أنا هعتذر بس عندي اجتماع الساعة 10 فأنا يا دوب أروح أنا كنت فاكر هنبدأ 9 أو تحضر من 9 ل 10 أنا حضرتك نورتنا يا دكتور أيمن حضرتك نورتنا كنا نسعد بوجودك لا أبدا معلش ما فيش حظ مالناش حظ اتفضل اتفضل يا دكتور مع السلامة مع الو صباح النور دكتوره ايه يا زي كامله ايه انت فين ايوه 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 تمام اه اه انا بحاول ادخل انا دخلت بس بحاول نشوف الباحثين بقى فهشوف هشوف كده و أنا يعني بدأنا ندخل اه لا بدأنا ندخل مع السلامة طب احنا مين اللي بيتصل بالباحثين يعني هو فين محمد موبايلات مش شغال محمد معلش سامعني يعني انا قلت اخش من الموبايل موبايل مش شغال هات الموبايل مش شغال يعني ممكن نعمل تشيك مع حضراتكم بس هل هو بروفيسور علي ممكن تشتغل هنا دي السماعة دي ده بتقولي
السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته زملائي الافاضل يشرفنا وجودكم استاذ استاذ دكتور ليلى خبير رئيس الجلسه منوران يا فندم ونأسف على اي تاخير دكتور ليلى دكتور ليلى حضرتك سمعانا هنعمل تيست بس للصوت والحاجات دي دكتور ليلى خضير استاذ دكتور ليلى خضير اي دكتور احمد صباح الخير صباح الفل يا فندم ناسف على التاخير يا فندم وعلى ال... انت عارفه القاهره يوم الاحد يعني فمنورانا استاذ الدكتور ليلى خضير استاذ العماره في جامعه عين شمس و... ورئيسه الجلسه النهارده المهندسه هند مصطفى بروفيسور الكساندر هو دخل بالغلط على الروم الثانيه وبعتنا له لينك مش معانا والباحثين مش معانا دخلوا بالغلط فعلا في الروم الثانيه برضه لا خبر <تصفيق> طيب خير يدخلوا بس واحنا ان شاء الله نبتدي على طول انا دخل في ناس هم بيدخلوا الروم تمام وانا بعمل ادمت تمام وحضرتك الجلسه بقى حضرتك رئيسه الجلسه واستاذتنا كلنا ويعني ربنا يخليك ميرسي قوي شكرا شكرا على الدعوه الكريمه دائما حضرتك داعمه لينا وشرفتينا يا فندم شكرا يا دكتور احمد شكرا يا دكتور احمد اوكي طيب هستاذن بس حضراتكم الباحثين المشاركين في الجلسه دي ممكن تكتبوا على الشات مين موجود يعني مثلا بيبر 1 2 3 احنا عندنا 5 بيبرز فعايزين نعرف بس مين موجود بحيث نبتدي على طول ان شاء الله نعوض ال 30 minutes اللي راحوا مننا اوكي هستاذنكم بس نكتب على الشات مين موجود من الباحثين الخمسه اللي جوه السيشن احنا عندنا توقا حسن، إينيس سيد، أميرة محروس، شيماء مجدي وهند مصطفى، مين موجود يا جماعة منهم لو سمحتوا؟ بحيث بس نبتدي على طول. دكتور إيمان أنتِ عند حضرتك شيماء مش كده؟ الجروب بتاع دكتور شيماء أو أوكي هند ما أنا عارفة إن أنتِ موجودة. تمام هي بالنسبة لـ لـ لشيماء هي شيماء موجودة. موجودين اوكي لا لا انا اوكي هل بقى في اي حد من الثلاثه توقا او ايناس او اميره اي حد منهم موجود يا جماعه؟ لا انا ايناس موجوده ايناس اوكي حلو جدا احنا بنكلمها دلوقتي بنحاول نكلمها ممكن ندخل ممكن ايناس لو جاهزه تبدا تعرض هو انا بس كان عندي سؤال انا النهارده في البرزنتيشن ولا هي بروفيسور الكساندر هلو Hello, Hello, I'm here. How are you? How Hello. Are you? Nice to meet you. Nice to see you. <laughs> yes, nice to see you. Uh, for our second uh, conference, we uh, we uh, we were waiting for you yesterday. <laughs> yes, I wanted to be in Cairo actually. <laughs> yeah. It's nice to meet you. Uh, uh, our uh, session here, uh, the head of our session, Dr. Layla Khudir. Uh, she's yes. with us. Uh, Good morning. Oh. Good, good morning, morning, Professor Alexander. How are you? Very good. And you? I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> Hope okay. you're having a good day. Yes, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. Uh, so shall we start the session? Uh, our session today is uh, entitled the Architecture, Design and Sustainability. And we have five papers. Um, I believe the first one we'll start with is Ines Said. Ines, are you ready for presentation? To ask if the presentation is already shared with you, or I have to share it with you. Uh, Dr. Iman, uh, are yes. we going to share her presentation? Or uh, she uh, should yes, do? She, she she must share her screen to, uh, to okay. begin her presentation. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Ines. I didn't have it yet. I have it as an PDF. It's oh, it's fine, Ines. Easy. You can just use it as PDF. It's okay. Okay. I'll we we have to there. start. And please, all the presenters, if you could uh, prepare your presentations uh, uh, so that we could proceed uh, uh, immediately after each other. So uh, Ines Said is going to present her paper under the title Social Sustainability in Residential Communities, Quality of Life Through Users' Behavior Attitudes. 
Okay, Ness, we are waiting for you. You have almost 10 minutes to present. And the screen water. Yes, please go on. You have ten minutes here, Ines. Okay. 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 Uh, hi, my name is Ines Sayed. Uh, I'm lecture assistant at ASC uh, and a PhD student at Cairo University. Um, and the topic today will be on social sustainability in residential communities, uh, quality of life to uh, users' behavior attitudes. Uh, in the beginning, we talked about the series and the topics related to quality of life from uh, the term physical and the term social. And the series is the uh, more common series in the literature. Uh, in, Ines, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Ines, for interrupting you, but one of the chairs uh, will not understand uh, unless you speak English most of the time. So please try to speak okay. English. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. All I said uh, is that uh, the research is about uh, social sustainability in residential communities. First, uh, uh, the, the first part of the research started with uh, the series about the quality of life that's related to physical environment and social environment. Then we go through individual needs and per perceptions through human needs in urban, which are classified into six main parts, security, clarity, privacy, social interaction, uh, identity and the convenience. The second part was about accessibility and the ability to control vitality, how it fits and activities. Uh, the second main part was the individual perceptions and how they perceived these activities or these factors uh, from their environment. Then we go through physical, uh, sorry, psychological design approaches, which is contains of two main approaches, uh, the cognitive approaches and the pluralistic approaches. Cognitive approaches is about how people re learn from the, surround the surrounding environment. The pluralistic uh, approach is how uh, people interact um, in a balance with their uh, surrounding environment. Uh, and we go through personal environment relationship, how this environment could affect the relation between individuals and the environment and how they act according to this um, relation. And we have uh, three main um, relations, which are uh, determinism, possibilism, and probabilism. Determinism, in which the environment forces people to have in, uh, in such an actual way uh, they perform in. Uh, the possibilism is uh, individuals shape their environment to, sub, uh, to um, provide their needs. Uh, and the probabilism is a balanced relation between uh, environment and individuals. So the main aim of this research is to investigate the quality of life in urban communities by framing different psychological indicators that can be used as a tool in assessing residential uh, uh, residents' behavior in their residential communities and their relation with this environment or their uh, surrounding environment as a residential community. Um, the relation between currents, uh, the hypothesis was um, that the relation between current urban setting and behavior of individuals in residential communities could affect the different indicators of the quality of life. That's why the study is focused on this part and study it. So, um, the study um, uh, determined a tool to test this hypothesis through uh, creating a clear framework that used uh, to monitor and explain the different models of relation and how these models could affect social sustainability in residential communities. Uh, the methodology goes through different steps. The first step was how we could um, deal with the quantitative and the qualitative 
object, uh, subjects. So we had to merge uh, the different aspects and different indicators of quality of life, um, uh, each one uh, objective and subjective one uh, as urban setting, uh, quality of life, social and environmental aspects and the human aspects. Then we defined a criteria to select the more suitable uh, indicators that could affect the real relation between resident and environment uh, through uh, uh, should be able to med be measured relevant to the topic of the research, comparable, understandable, responsive, uh, time related to uh, the era, uh, and leading. Then the methodology goes through uh, how these uh, qualitative indicators could be transfer to quantitative to get results or to get uh, measurements that could reflect the relation. Then uh, we used um, to merge subjective and objective indicators uh, and uh, used um, swapping tools and attitudes method to get uh, numbers from uh, the questionnaire used in the methodology. We used a questionnaire related to participants in uh, the residential areas. Uh, the advantage of using this tool, it's reduced sampling errors of informal work, uh, improves the credibility uh, of analytical uh, conclusion, and blending the analytical uh, results and the formal and for, and the, with the formal and the informal works into one set policy. Uh, these tools was used in the survey, which was a uh, sampling. Um, sampling was random, used random sampling uh, for uh, residents. Uh, through observation uh, and the questionnaire and interviews with the residents. Uh, statistical SPSS was used to transfer uh, the qualitative uh, and um, um, uh, questionnaire results uh, into uh, numbers and uh, diagrams. Urban maps was used also and observations from the research. Uh, then we go the case studies. We have two case studies. Uh, the criteria for selecting this case study was to select two different um, case, uh, case study in um, economic uh, standards with the same urban uh, planning um, scale and um, component. Uh, the selected area, sorry for that, but uh, it's the PDF, so I didn't have to, uh, the animation, sorry. Uh, the selected uh, case study was uh, a rehab, a rehab, Medina, a rehab city in New uh, Cairo. And the uh, new Zinhom residential, uh, it was an uh, informal city, then it's transferred to formal city as a gated community too. Um, sorry for this too. <laughs> Indicators assessment. Uh, the indicator assessment was a schedule, a framework as I mentioned before in the methodology that contains urban opportunity. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, just go on, please, Ines. It's okay. Okay, sorry. Um, uh, the framework that mentioned before in the methodology was about urban opportunities and urban constraints um, as an urban uh, environment then user satisfaction and land use violations that can be uh, happened through uh, um, un, um, through um, the needed uh, facilities uh, through the residents. They can do land use violation uh, to provide their needed uh, facilities. Um, results about both uh, rehab, uh, uh, rehab and um, Zenho. Um, a rehab provided most of the needed uh, services, transportation facilities and security. Uh, in, uh, although it is a um, social uh, relations with um, the surrounding um, users and the residents uh, was very weak and satisfaction was very uh, low as they, high, as they have high uh, expectations and the uh, perceived background, perception, sorry. Uh, quality of life about, uh, sorry, uh, quality of life in um, Benho. Um, security is um, 
already achieved as they have gated communities and some security uh, units, but it doesn't reflect on the users as they didn't feel any safe anymore. Uh, and uh, some, uh, some urban uh, elements are missing in the community and they didn't um, notice that. Um, and their perception was very low as they don't have any expectations about how communities should be designed. Uh, about the quality of life and the human aspect in post uh, case studies. Uh, Rehab uh, provides most of the social and environmental indicators and the psychological model in the close, uh, as it's more close, close to uh, be a pluralistic uh, model uh, as they have a balanced relation between users and uh, their environment. Uh, although in Zen home, uh, the residents uh, are facing uh, several problems about psychological uh, uh, needs, uh, and they already did uh, some violence, uh, and it's more close to be a cognitive model uh, as they um, act, uh, learn from their environment, and act directly uh, to what they need. Uh, I mentioned violation and herbal before. And sorry, but uh, for this, but uh, this is some of the pictures for them. Um, and last part, sorry for a long time. Uh, yes, last part was about recommendation and conclusion. The main issue is that uh, in post cases, the common thing is that uh, the post cases, uh, residents are not included in the uh, design or urban development progress uh, or um, uh, aware of how um, they um, ask for their needs uh, in rehab uh, they didn't uh, do any violations but they are not satisfied in zen home they do they did already uh, some violations as they act and uh, provide their needs by their own uh, without any uh, regulations or restrictions uh, to a community. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ines, for the interesting, well-organized presentation. Uh, and allow me to uh, Sorry for the the discussion. <laughs> it's okay, it's fine. It's expected, some technical issues. Uh, let's uh, uh, take a number of um, comments or questions. Uh, so please, I'm asking uh, Professor Alexander if you have a question or a comment. And for the other uh, audiences, you can add your question in the chat, please, in order to make it an organized discussion. Professor Alexander, do you have any question for Ines or a comment or whatever? Thank you very much. I very liked uh, your presentation, the topic, and it's a very relevant one. So thank you. Um, I want to know why did you choose this um, community in New Cairo and what was the reason for selecting that and how did the social sustainability change when you said first it was not a gated community but then it was a gated one so what uh, why did you choose it and what did change Ines, I, I chose uh, yes uh, the posts are gated communities. Uh, Rehab uh, is a new uh, compound uh, that is marketed as a new compound that satisfied all the quality of life for its residents. That's why I wanted to test if these uh, indicators already achieved in this community or not. And in parallel uh, uh, was, uh, sorry, in the opposite was uh, the Zinhom uh, compound. Uh, or uh, uh, informal city, old, informal old city that was redesigned to be formal city, it's a gated community too. So I wanted to test if the new gated communities from informal to formal and uh, uh, already uh, uh, branded uh, uh, gated community versus uh, so can uh, test the opposites and know if these indicators could affect the relation between residents with each other and residents with their environment. Okay. So, yes, uh, do you know, Ines? I, I was really quite, you know, I was quite uh, uh, not feeling relieved with the comparison between Rehab and the new Zenhom. Uh, the, the comparison was quite far away. There was no an faces for analogy between both case studies. I, I'm really not convinced by such comparison. 
the social cohesion is quite different. The type of people, the standard, social standard is quite different. Um, I wasn't convinced actually with this comparison. However, I have one question for you regarding your hypothesis. Uh, how did you check your hypothesis? Did you make a test, an experiment to make sure that it was right? And was it proved right, wrong or whatever? Yes, I made a framework from three case studies, international case studies that studied the, the quality of life. Uh, mm -hmm. and made a frame a comprehensive framework then i made a pilot questionnaire in these uh, residential communities and other different residential communities to test indicators and uh, select the most effective indicators that the uh, residents checked it and i made a, a small uh, interviews in three to four with uh, expertise uh, in the field uh, to select also the um, uh, the highly effective uh, indicators to test it uh, on the framework. Okay, one last comment. I'm sorry for that, but when you said no, no, uh, okay. that the, the indicators by other countries, how did you make sure that, that such indicators by other countries will fit in the uh, different social uh, lives in Egypt? Definitely, they will not uh, fit, uh, but I, I okay. tested it in the pilot questionnaire in case these uh, factors uh, has an effect on residents to test it. Okay, so as a researcher, yeah. You, yeah. You, should not, you should not say that uh, by other countries, indicators by all other countries. No, you have to say that I selected, I filtered them to tailor the Egyptian context, okay? Okay, yeah, it's already uh, filtered, okay. yes. Okay, let's turn to Dr. Imen. Uh, Dr. Imen, if you have any question or comment, please. Just asking about the the, uh, the level of uh, the case study that she uh, selected was uh, uh, about the rehab. Uh, she selected uh, a part of the community. Uh, it's the same as the question that she she, she needed to have either she to, to be specific, more specific and focused that she selected this uh, sector of the community yeah. or she must mm -hmm. have a, a, a general uh, overall uh, on the different uh, groups of the community so it's the same uh, scope uh, nearly the same uh, mm -hmm. comment yeah. okay uh, okay regarding Thanks. the scale uh, i already uh, i already uh, selected a scale that's relevant to uh, the scale of the zen home to be uh, um, same in area for uh, the comparison mm -hmm. I know rehab is more bigger, but I selected one district to be similar in area for uh, as uh, Zenhom. Okay. Okay, Ines. Thank you, Dr. Imen. Professor Alexander, uh, does any of the audiences we have here uh, have any question or comment for uh, Ines? Please, if you have more... any comments, please add it. It's okay, go I have, on. I, I, I have one more comment. I like very yes. much um, how you also the results. Um, but I think if you continue with this research, you can go and become much more precise in the results. So you talk about good social phenomena, but what exactly are that? Mm. What is the problem of safety? What kind? What kind of mm. violence is there? What kind of um, qualities are missing? So if you go more deep into it and list them and, and look more close to them, I think it might also be helpful. Okay. Yes, it's already uh, it's already continued. <laughs> good, good. It's a good, it's a good, uh, it's a good note to, to consider. Okay, so uh, thank you, Ines, again, and to the, our audience. Please, we'll turn now to Amira Mahrous. Amira, are you ready thank for you, presenting doctors. your paper? Okay, Amira yes. is presenting uh, biophilia as a sustainable design approach for university building uh, design, a case study in university campus design studios, Cairo, Egypt. You have ten minutes, yes, Amira. Yes, sure. please go on. Okay, I'm presenting the, this topic as mentioned by Dr. Laila. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I will start by introduction, a uh, small brief about biophilia. It's all, uh, it's all it's known. Uh, sorry. Um, biophilia states that humans are uh, naturally uh, drawn to the natural world. Uh, and their separation uh, have negative effect on their physical, psychological, and social well-being. Biophilic design is considered one of the best solutions to enhance the performance, especially for students. Sorry. Hello, do you hear me? 
Yes, your voice is clear. Okay. Please go on. Okay, I'm really sorry. Okay, the aim of this study to, to identify from the international literature and apply it in the Egyptian context, the main biophilic uh, elements that could enhance students' performance using biophilic design. Uh, and aim the main target uh, also to enhance their environmental psychology. This uh, the main gap I was trying to uh, fill in this paper. Uh, the paper structure starts by theoretical background, introducing uh, what are the biophilic patterns that enhance the student's uh, performance and cognition by analyzing uh, international uh, literature and uh, relevant theories. And this was um, by um, finding the impact on uh, uh, biophilic design environmental psychology, a uh, brief and historical time line and theoretical uh, background on the environmental psychology physical characteristics and then these concluded patterns uh, will be uh, in, applied empirically uh, in um, university campus in the Egyptian context uh, by investigating a uh, user's preference of the specific uh, design studio in uh, university uh, Egyptian university and highlighting the impact of these patterns uh, on students by uh, uh, this would be done through photo questionnaire and then analysis was done through SPSS software. First of all, we know, all know uh, that biophilic uh, the terminology was introduced by the biologist Edward Wilson in 1984. Uh, and this proposed that humans uh, have tendency uh, to nature uh, uh, and it's also, um, uh, it's its inbuilt need to interact with nature and other living things. Biophilia first was uh, proposed by Kellert uh, to, into 72 attributes, six elements and two dimensions as, as shown here. And then these elements were summarized to three experience and 25 attributes in 2018. At 2020, uh, Brewing and Ryan uh, minimized these characteristics. And finally, uh, at 2020, uh, these elements were summarized into light, protection and control, air, views, uh, greenery, uh, curiosity, material, color, and finish. Also, there are uh, main uh, theories that uh, focus on enhancing the environmental psychology. Uh, these theories are place attachment theory, stress reduction theory, the prospect refugee, a restorative environmental design, attention restoration theory. Also, uh, these by applying uh, more, more full patterns in the uh, above mentioned theories, the mystery, structural property, coherence, and legibility. And for the other two theories, applying by uh, being away, extent, fascination, and compatibility. This paper mainly focuses on uh, physical health and environmental comfort, as mentioned before. These are the main elements that also enhance this, uh, the performance of students, as mentioned in the international literature. According to uh, previous studies, uh, the studies uh, mentioned as a reference in the paper and also analyzed in, in depth in my PhD thesis, but uh, according to the limitation of time, I could not, uh, and the uh, weight count, I could not mention all these uh, case studies. Uh, there was analysis for international uh, case studies applying biophilic elements in the university campus in order to identify the main elements to enhance the students' uh, performance. After extracting and analyzing these case studies, uh, there, uh, con they concluded that the natural connection to nature and the presence of water, dynamic diffuse of light, connection to natural system, material connection to nature, and prospect refugee are the main elements that uh, need to be found in a university campus or a building to enhance the performance of students. This was uh, done through rating the students for uh, before and after for the campus. Some of these studies applied virtual reality and some photo questionnaire and some in change in the physical uh, environment. In this paper, uh, due to the time limitation and the uh, other limitation mentioned in the paper, it was uh, selected to use the uh, photo, uh, photo questionnaire survey uh, students were asked to rate uh, students and users. So professors and assistant lecturer were included in the questionnaire uh, to rate a selected design studio uh, uh, after before uh, biophilic environment and after applying the elements collected from the literature with uh, sometimes low intensity of vegetation and sometimes high vis uh, intensity in vegetation. And the last alternative was a combination between the six uh, mentioned attributes extracted from the international literature. 
uh, this is a brief about the participants. The means uh, of uh, the questionnaire shows the six alternatives have the greatest, uh, greatest impact on uh, the student's performance uh, according to the response to the questionnaire. For the patterns, according to the literature, according to the analysis of the students, also the uh, six alternatives uh, yielded the highest uh, impact on the students' performance. The main aim of the paper to find the correlation between the design, biofield design pattern and student performance. And it was found by the study, it, conf it confirmed that uh, lighting and shading, plantation, naturally inspired color uh, yielded the highest uh, to, uh, according to students' performance. And uh, the ventilation was, uh, wasn't uh, that much effective. And maybe because it was through, because of the method, uh, it need more analysis uh, by different methodologies to ensure the other patterns could be adapted to Egypt or not. Confirming the data to know how much uh, uh, these elements affect the performance, uh, uh, there was a multiple regression test uh, done and uh, it shows that plantation could change the performance by 11%. Uh, also the natural co color uh, in the classroom 10% and daylighting was affected by 12%. Thank you. Thank you, Amira, for the interesting presentation and the nice topic. I believe biophilia uh, is a topic of interest for all of us as architects. Um, and I, I have a very slight two comments, Keda, that will not take a lot of time. Uh, first of all, biophilia is love for life. And you actually presented uh, your work with the same manner. So thank you. Um, the first comment is a, a little bit funny because when you presented your uh, the charts, the pie charts you've presented the, about the respondents to the experiments you have done, uh, most of them were may, uh, females. So do you have any yes. explanation for this? And will it make uh, a difference? I, yes, um, of course, doctor. This was a part from the PhD, uh, as I mentioned. Uh, this part was starting the pilot study to ensure the main elements that could affect. And this then will take another layer of work uh, uh, applying virtual reality and physical testing. So uh, these uh, um, results uh, le let me focus more about gender, how gender could affect this. This need another layer of work. This was mm -hmm. a very useful pilot study that could uh, that let me know a lot of things that wasn't included in my uh, methodology. The result shows a lot of things that need to be uh, discussed more. Yes, you're all right. Maybe, maybe gender, it, maybe it, it, female. It prov uh, maybe it proves that female uh, dominates the world. <laughs> OK. Yes, uh, one and the other. Architecture, architecture also. Yeah. Uh, females are more. Of, uh, females more than, than that's why okay, that, that was that was the funny comment. So my question is, um, when you mentioned the performance, uh, student performance, I didn't get what you mean by student performance because uh, somehow the, the statistics is quite um, distracting. Do you mean the performance yes. in terms of their satisfaction or their grades, their academic performance or their health? and well-being. So can you please determine what you mean by student performance and how it will be measured even if it wasn't covered in the paper? And that's my last yes, question. Yes, sure. Okay. Yes, sure, doctor. There is a doctor psycholo uh, psychologist uh, called, uh, her name is Habiba. She will uh, focus on this testing. There is a cognition and performance testing applying a task for students. It's mainly academic performance. Applying okay. a task for students in a specific time. And this task could be will be uh, reapplied after uh, students are uh, uh, went into a virtual reality uh, simulation for 10 minutes. And then, then uh, we will compare the results according to time. Right. Supposedly, okay. the, the, they take uh, less in the, uh, in the response and they concentrate more. So the quality mm -hmm. of work is higher in the uh, more or less time. So this, this will be apart from my PhD. This is another yeah. layer of work. Thank you. Thank you. This is a good answer. Okay. We'll Thank turn you, to Dr. Professor Alexander. Professor Alexander, please, the, can you join us in this discussion? Yes, of course. I'd like to. It's a great topic. And um, yeah, mm -hmm. I was also surprised about the females, but maybe they were more responsive <laughs> in this, <laughs> in this <Almost>. point. <laughs> or maybe uh, it's uh, maybe you have only female students there or more female. Um, maybe. 
<laughs> so I very, very much like that you also went into the prioritization of the factors so that you say which ones are more, uh, more relevant and which are less. I'm interested in, I have two comments. First of all, I'm very interested in how uh, this uh, biophilic design can be integrated. Can it be applied to universities later when they already build um, as yes. add-ons? Or would it be much more worthful if in the initial design we would integrate this biophilic, like you've seen and shown in some photos, some kind of um, organic design form. Um, so can you say something about that? Yes, sure. Approach. It's preferred to be introduced while designing the campus because some of the elements need transparency between inside and outside and also cross ventilation and daylighting. So it's very hard to ad uh, um, adjust a, an already existing building, but it's never, uh, it's not impossible. It could be, but not all elements uh, could be applied. So there will be alternatives. For example, the need of the daylight, we need it uh, in our daily life, especially it was found in design study it will I, I yielded the highest impact so what could i do in an existing building uh, there are a lot of technologies that apply uh, can give me the same effect it will be more uh, maybe uh, more pricey uh, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, not easy in installation but it's applicable yes it always depends also on the kind of buildings yes uh, you are facing or you have and the second one are the criteria you have. I think, um, where you can you show them again? Maybe Which where thing? that all the criteria. If you this one? Yes, yes. Yes. This one. Yes. The cri for this criteria was extracted from international literature analysis and international case studies applied a lot of, uh, again, most of the biophilic elements. And they concluded that these elements are the mainly and uh, the main elements that impact the student performance. Yes. According to this literature, I try to apply it in. Yes, in my eyes, um, those are not enough criteria, but I think that maybe you have integrated them because there are other things really important is the, the quality of the air, for example, uh, the sound um, there, um, maybe also uh, the interior green, which we can see. Water is one yes. of them, yes. So I think that could be extended, this uh, yes, it could list be. of criteria. Uh, uh, as we all know, um, uh, quantifying biophilic design is really uh, yeah, an interesting topic. Uh, and also these days, uh, there is no quantified element that could uh, be applied in this physical space. No, 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 till now, there is not a, no research um, focus on how much of these elements could be applied in the space to save it. So it's really hard to apply the 72 attributes. All I'm trying to do is making a quantifying, a changing uh, biophilia from quality to quantity in order to know how much this could affect the student. This is uh, really a research gap. Maybe uh, it needs more uh, analysis and need more research. Yes, uh, of course, uh, research never stops. Uh, but uh, the elements are too much. So it uh, was needed to be minimized in order to be able to apply uh, my methodology. It's one of the, my limitation, of course. Yes, and I think it's very fine if you limit to yes. just few or just one of them to go there into really deep into detail. Thank you yes. very much. It's a very nice Thank you so much. topic. Thank you, Thank so you much. Amira, uh, Thank you, Professor Alexander, uh, Dr. Imen. Do you have any further comments for Amira? Dr. Imen. Okay, until Dr. Imen is ready, uh, I now uh, welcome Shaime Magdi to uh, present her work. Shaime, are you ready? I'll stop sharing. Okay. I'm not sure if Dr. Imen is hearing us. Uh, yes, Dr. Okay. Leila, can you hear me okay. now? Yes, oh, yes, yes, uh, please. Uh, uh, you're waiting for uh, who's if you, uh, Shaime Magdi. Uh, uh, okay, we've got uh, Toha. Uh, she's not here in the session, but uh, 
she's uh, yani she's supposed to be uh, joining us but we've got her okay. presentation and she has uh, recorded an audio so can we make uh, it at the end please we can, yes, because yes. we'll not have a discussion okay. since it's we not can, uh, we can uh, now take begin with shayme uh, or hind uh, hind i think hind is ready now hind are you ready okay and then i'll let shayme to be prepared for the next after hind okay 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 sorry hind are you there Yes, uh, and um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. So Hand is presenting um, now okay. uh, her paper, A Strategy for Lakes Ecological Restoration by Integrated Constructed Wetland, uh, 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 the case of Lake Qarun in Egypt. So Hand, please, okay, you have 10 minutes. I just have to share. Yes. Okay. Uh, Um, okay, just take some, okay. Uh, is it clear? Is it shown now? It's still sharing. Okay. Yet. Okay. Okay, so now we can see it. You can get started, please. Okay. Uh, so my title is Strategy for Lakes Ecological Restoration by Integrated Constructed Dell Wetlands. Uh, I'm co-authored with uh, Professor Dr. Saharate and Professor Dr. Rosina Faisal. Um, uh, first, a uh, brief introduction about uh, the study. Uh, this study is about lake restoration as a very important element in livelihood of creatures and supporting human beings. Uh, so I will uh, present today uh, an ecological restoration strategy for Lake Karun, which is uh, one of the oldest uh, lakes in, uh, in Egypt, situated in the uh, Fayum Governorate. And uh, I will use uh, an approach, the uh, natural uh, based solution approach, it's called integrated constructed wetlands, as Lake Karun itself is considered uh, a natural wetland. So uh, I will. I will illustrate, illustrate this uh, in the coming uh, slides. Uh, first, uh, to introduce what is ecological restoration, it is uh, healing or uh, helping the environment to heal back to its uh, original state uh, before the degradation or uh, the negative impact that was uh, done by human or uh, other uh, factors. So the ecological restoration is the uh, optimum uh, stage actually we can reach uh, to make uh, uh, nature go back to its state. Uh, mitigation is uh, a lower, uh, the, the base uh, uh, stage, which is uh, just reducing the bad impact and uh, rehabilitation is just uh, enhancing uh, some of the features uh, of the uh, ecosystem. Uh, of course, uh, there are many benefits. Uh, in my opinion, the most important one uh, of uh, ecological restoration is actually prevent the climate change action uh, and uh, negative impacts that we are facing today, like drought, flooding, uh, erosion, and uh, many other uh, hydrological uh, issues. So uh, just to uh, first introduce what is wetlands. Uh, wetlands are uh, natural features uh, um, are in the on a global scale, uh, and uh, they are existing uh, in many uh, types and in many uh, environments. And actually, the Ramsar Convention, which is uh, an international organization, uh, is uh, 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 is responsible or is uh, promoting the the, uh, the importance of these wetlands uh, annually in a convention and uh, uh, with uh, recommendations and how to manage them and how to help uh, developing uh, and uh, uh, other communities to manage uh, the these resources. Uh, according to the EPA, uh, the, uh, the Environmental Protection Agency, uh, so there are many types of wetlands, uh, swamps, marshes, bogs, fens. These uh, are uh, according to their uh, uh, structure and uh, features. So wetlands, of course, have uh, they are called the kidneys of the earth. Uh, because of their ability of uh, water purification, uh, among other uh, uh, ecological uh, benefits uh, and uh, cultural benefits, and, uh, uh, and especially providing a wildlife uh, habitat for other creatures. And sadly, 50% uh, of these wetlands uh, in the world are being uh, lost since 1990, and there is an increasing uh, uh, rate, uh, among other natural systems uh, in this century. 
so the restoration that happens to wetlands uh, normally, it's not a targeting uh, wetlands uh, alone. It is among uh, a bigger plan uh, of flip, uh, floodplain uh, uh, restoration or, or uh, uh, storm, or, uh, storm and water management uh, or recreation plans or land use uh, plans. Uh, they all uh, are uh, big plans and they are uh, integrated inside it, uh, protection or management or preservation of these uh, types of wetlands uh, to maintain a balanced uh, ecosystems. My proposed uh, approach uh, as we are talking about wetlands is integrated constructed wetlands uh, and they are simply are uh, constructed wetlands which are uh, combined with uh, restored uh, wetlands uh, or vegetation uh, to increase uh, the abundance and richness uh, of vegetation and uh, the ecosystem and uh, biodiversity uh, of these systems. So the water flows, uh, <clears throat> the water inflow uh, usually uh, have a sedimentation pond and then uh, it goes into many any cascaded basins to help the water be filtered and purified. And we uh, provide our plain areas uh, for uh, habitat. And that is very important uh, because there is a big difference between constructed wetlands and uh, uh, restored ones. The constructed ones are mainly controlling uh, the, the, the um, pollution rate, uh, but uh, the uh, integrated, they are actually promoting more habitat for, for creatures and uh, vegetation diversity. Uh, for lake restoration, I have, uh, have cross-examined uh, many uh, uh, types of lakes of restoration. Uh, and uh, all types, uh, uh, so after this uh, cross examination, uh, I have concluded that uh, the restoration plan also uh, first start with the site history and studying uh, the problems uh, with the site and uh, uh, community and cultural aspects. And there are uh, sites and also a period of time that are controlling this plan for the prioritization strategy to take place. Uh, and the first thing we do when we restore something, we have to stop or control the point and non-point source pollution because they are the source of the pollution. Uh, there are many people who fight, uh, all the laws and regulations, uh, dredging lakes, uh, there are new solutions or natural based solutions, uh, which, uh, which are many. So we are going to take uh, uh, first uh, <clears throat> First uh, case study to elaborate more about how we start the restoration. And of course, as a result, uh, the collaboration between uh, public and experts is a very important thing. Uh, the preservation, recovering of the ecosystem is also important as controlling the pollution. They should go parallel. And monitoring is a very important stage uh, to ensure the, uh, the success of our plan. So the first uh, uh, case study is called Erhai Lake. This lake is uh, in Quinning uh, province uh, in China. And uh, as, as it's more related to, to my case study, the main challenges and problems is uh, agriculture uh, drainage and uh, the human pressure. So this lake was degraded from the, from the 80s and there was a plan that implemented from 19, uh, 1980 to 1990, and uh, though many regulations and many alters were, were happened, it didn't uh, actually enhance any of the ecosystem. So, um, in 2000, uh, in 1991, a new plan uh, was uh, introduced to the government, and uh, it uh, was uh, uh, driven by ecological restoration at the first place, uh, restoring uh, green belts and relocating uh, the uh, residents uh, was one of the main features that uh, actually altered the, the monitoring of the, of the ecosystem. Uh, with, of course, um, uh, wetlands they played a very important role in, uh, in the green belt and purifications uh, of uh, water and uh, runoff uh, of the uh, uh, storms and also created a, a green habitat. And according to the uh, monitoring study, the uh, water uh, grade was uh, uh, increased uh, from grade uh, uh, three to grade one. And also the abundance and richness of uh, habitat was uh, um, monitored and uh, showed a, a great increase. So this is just showing how uh, the, the, the green infrastructure works and how the, the, the wetlands actually help divert the water in much more 
uh, purified weights until before it, it reaches the, the lake. So this is before uh, actually the restoration plan. We can see Elijah Bloom. We can see uh, a very uh, degraded uh, vegetation environment. And also the same problem as we face the, the, uh, the, the residents and the human pressure on, uh, on the uh, soil and land. Other lake also is called the Anchi Lake. Uh, these lakes are, are also, uh, um, they depend uh, on large communities. So the, the level of pollution is high. Um, this lake also uh, implemented a 10 year plan uh, by ecological restoration and making uh, green belts for purification of the water. And the most important thing that the monitoring, uh, the monitoring is, is, is something periodically is done to monitor the water and to alter the, the, uh, the treatment plan if needed uh, each time. So come to our case study, Lake Karun. It's located in Fahim Governorate at the uh, south, uh, um, south of Cairo. Uh, this uh, lake uh, was designated as a wetland site in, 19, in 18, uh, 2012 and as a natural pro protectorate uh, in 1989. Uh, and it has it is one of the oldest uh, lake historical lake in Egypt, uh, the third largest lake, and it has uh, uh, magnificent features uh, combining between desert landscape and uh, agriculture and uh, uh, landscape. And it's also a very important uh, bird watching site uh, that is listed on the international organizations and uh, world um, sites. So the Hind, I'm really sorry for interrupting you, but we are running out of time and the session should close at 11. So can you please go to the conclusions? Please. Yes, yes, I will hurry up. Please. I will hurry up. There are many problems, of course, uh, and main one is sewage uh, fluids flowing into the lake and uh, the human pressure. So at the end, I have concluded a framework. This is all the plans that have been uh, adjusted before. I have concluded a, a framework uh, that is uh, mainly uh, first uh, starts with identifying the main problems and uh, define what we want to do about water, soil, fish, and vegetation, and how uh, integrated constructed with lands can do the treatment. Uh, and of course, a very important thing is the monitor effectiveness that we have to come up with uh, uh, performance criteria and standard assessment criteria for evaluating the whole process uh, and the participant um, with the participation approach uh, of uh, public and uh, 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 multidisciplinary team because this is not uh, one, one field that is going to make an intervention. This is uh, about ecology, architecture, landscape, and uh, environmental engineering. So uh, a holistic plan should be uh, put out and well studied and uh, monitored by one entity because uh, of the many problems that happened before of uh, conflicting uh, uh, authorities uh, and uh, lag of, of implementation and so on. Thank you, Hend, Hend, very much. It was really an interesting presentation. You took us all to these green areas, and I believe it was very relaxing. Thanks. Okay, yeah. uh, since we are running out of time, I will just take one comment from each of us. So my comment is, uh, please take care while presenting as a researcher, not to mention, uh, in my opinion, it's whatever important because uh, it's never our opinion. It's all about facts. It's all about prioritization of different factors and getting evidence that this is the most uh, uh, evident thing, uh, factor. So it's never in our opinion, okay? So this sometimes uh, make it uh, look like a, a debatable argument. So uh, although you, are, you have a very interesting way of presentation, you are extremely passionate about your point, but sometimes such uh, terminologies uh, may uh, threaten the, the way others perceive your topic. Uh, finally, the, the restoration plan, this proposed strategy is excellent. I wish you could in, explain it in more details, uh, but I understand your desire to explain the case studies more. So thank you very much. Uh, Professor Alexander, please, if you have any comment for uh, Hind. Yes, I will do that very fast. Um, yes. I'm very, um, I very much think that your proposed strategy is good and I would like to know much more about it. Mm. Um, you spent 95% of the time describing the situation, um, describing the case studies uh, Lake Karun and so on. And I think it would be much more important to more fast focus on the strategy and to use more of the time to explain uh, yeah, what you have developed, what is the new knowledge you have 
created. This for me here is not yet clear because we, yeah, we did could not talk so much about it. From the strategy, some parts I think are general and some where uh, you have developed within your study. And I would like to know what is your, um, yeah, what are the new points you have found and applied on Lake Karun? But maybe there's not enough time right now. Um, but that's um, yeah, that's what should come out most yes. strong in your presentation. Yes, yes. Okay. Please hand the take care of this next time because this framework uh, should have been explained more. Uh, Dr. Iman, do you have any exactly. uh, final comment? Uh, actually, it's an interesting topic, and uh, you, uh, yeah, and you professors, uh, you covered all the all things uh, that could be said. Uh, she really needs to explain more, uh, focus more on the strategy she proposed. Uh, uh, but it's really very interesting. Thank you, Henry. Yes. Yani, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Imin. Okay. Professor Alexander, we'll turn to Shaima Magdi. Are they ready now, Shayme. Dr. Imin? Uh, yes, I think Shaima with us. Okay. Shaima, are you there? Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. So another topic about wetlands, comparative analysis of river waterfront urban spaces to enhance social interaction, case study of Mamsha Ahl Mosque. And please stick to the 10 minutes. Timeline, please. معلش لو حد فتح الميكروفون يقفلوا عشان في نويز يا جماعة لو سمحتوا. Okay, get started. أستاذنا حد كده لو نعمل presentation عربي. هي بروفيسور اكزندر زوينج اس فهيبقى صعب جدا يا شيماء فهنحاول تحاولي بليز علشان هو كده مش هيبقى فاهم. اوكي حاولي حاولي از هارد از يو كان اوكي يلا جو جو اون بليز. ذا توبيك توكينج اباوت امبورتنس اوف ذا ريفر ووتر فرونت اربن سبيسز اند هاو ات افكت ذا بيبول So we work on how to uh, compare between the case studies uh, in the international cases and the uh, project of Mancha al in Cairo uh, to know how to improve the quality of life and uh, enhance the social interaction between people in Egypt. So we uh, know that the waterfront are invaluable and non-renewable resources and one of the most valuable in the country. And it and uh, the waterfront areas uh, retain uh, the economic values and improve unique uh, features. So we work on uh, uh, redefine the image uh, along the water river front so we can uh, improve the efficiency and increase the productivity and cultural and social and re recreational uh, activities uh, along the river. So we work on a comprehensive analysis uh, along the river front of urban spaces uh, to achieve a, the common uh, development factors between the international case studies and much animals. So in the first phase, we work on the collecting data from the theoretical and the analytical uh, sources. Then we analyze the theoretical data uh, in both the international case studies and the national case studies. Uh, then we conduct the comprehensive uh, principles and aspects extracted from the data from the uh, previous uh, two phases. So in the theoretical part, we work on the principles and aspects of the river water front. Then in the river water front, uh, in the analytical uh, study, we work on the river water front uh, principles and aspects uh, to have the water front 
uh, friends and aspects. Um, I piece one theoretical assets uh, in methodology. Right now, uh, we have uh, in the first uh, uh, analysis theoretical analysis, uh, we have uh, our from uh, principles and aspects. After that, we have uh, made analytical as, uh, studies, uh, follow our follow the principles and aspects to him. Uh, after that, we have converted to uh, two studies to uh, uh, after um, to product uh, building uh, building matrix uh, le, le, for uh, principles and uh, for our uh, from uh, from that. Uh, comparative free, uh, comparative analysis uh, two of studies and common principles between case study international case study and national case study if we work on knowing how, what are the definition of the river waterfront we know that the sections of the town or the city are just to the river uh, or lake or harbor or etc. No, as the waterfront, uh, the waterfront or the urban areas uh, adjust and approximately to the water. So the surrounding area to the water, to the water is the waterfront areas we work on, analyze it to, to measure how the developments in Egypt working on the same. Uh, direction with the international case studies. Now we have the international case study. Okay, it shows. <laughs> Okay, we, we choose uh, three uh, case studies, which uh, which is uh, the same of uh, which uh, achieve uh, some of uh, SDGs goals according to their international regulations. Uh, all the project in a major city and a mega more, uh, mega projects more than uh, ten kilometers. Okay, and uh, all uh, all the projects uh, are the closest case study. Cases to Nero Nile Riverfront. Okay, first case study uh, was in Shanghai, uh, 2017, uh, and uh, another uh, study number two uh, uh, in Madrid, uh, 20, uh, 2007 uh, to 2015, uh, 2015, and uh, the uh, third uh, case study was uh, in uh, India, Ahmedabad. Uh, seven, uh, 2016. Okay, uh, first one uh, in uh, Shanghai, they uh, want to uh, reconnect the isolated riverfront with, uh, with the city, returning the life to uh, riverfront and uh, public uh, public spaces and uh, uh, the social life uh, to the uh, riverfront uh, by uh, achieving some of uh, some. Uh, DG's uh, goals and bring uh, visit, uh, residents and uh, visitors back to the riverfront um, by uh, designing some uh, public spaces uh, and uh, some uh, uh, and some activities. Uh, so uh, uh, this uh, will bring uh, the life to uh, the major city and the heart of the city, is the river. Uh, in Madrid, uh, they uh, want to achieve uh, some uh, SDGs goals and they want to uh, bring back uh, the life uh, to the river by uh, there was there were uh, some you know, a lot of uh, highways around the river uh, so it uh, can uh, uh, affect uh, effect on uh, the life uh, social life uh, which, uh, closest the river okay um, they um, away uh, the high, highways uh, uh, away, away. Uh, the roots uh, river, uh, and they change, uh, change, change it uh, by uh, uh, public spaces and uh, green areas. In uh, uh, India, uh, uh, the project self uh, financing. Uh, and it uh, achieved uh, goal, uh, its goals without uh, really any 
uh, funding from uh, the government, bring a new life to the center of the city, uh, and uh, it's based on undergraduate uh, 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 under graduation, graduate and river uh, realizing of uh, uh, neighborhood. Okay, uh, they. Uh, uh, I'm sorry for interrupting, Shaime uh, and the team. Please, can you uh, go to the findings directly because we are running out of time? Please. Okay. Uh, now, Mom Shumasr, uh, 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 first study, uh, it's a long, a long uh, five and one two uh, longer. It's a uh, sector, uh, sector for uh, sector. Uh, one sector from Kobri uh, uh, Bridge uh, to Kobri October, and second from Kostra uh, Neil Kobri and Ella uh, to uh, uh, in Baba Bridge. Uh, answered uh, from Tahrir uh, Masr and Kubri Estesh. From theoretical and analytic, we have principles for design uh, river front. It's this uh, uh, divided for uh, three uh, uh, three sector: natural and built environment, character connection. Uh, uh, riverfront landscape, la it is a buffer uh, for uh, build environmental uh, landscape, lighting, and so uh, facades uh, material. Uh, uh, that's the principles we have. Uh, and aspects waterfront uh, uh, divided for uh, uh, one. Five uh, accessibility, environment, and ecology, architect, urbanic uh, activity, safety, and uh, this uh, sub uh, sub estimate for uh, sub aspects. From this axis, uh, uh, principles and accept, we have a matrix. In matrix B, it is uh, to uh, column principles, design, and aspects, uh, and aspects. Uh, aspects waterfronts in uh, um, building two SDG indicators. This is matrix we have. Uh, we have uh, a code it, uh, from uh, national and international case study. Uh, from in uh, uh, case study, national case study, international, international. From this matrix, we have. A charts. Uh, this is charts uh, show uh, to us uh, the all the principles uh, uh, applied in the two case study national and case study and then non uh, and the international. Uh, but uh, we have a high grade uh, from uh, this uh, uh, such as social and tourism and sociality. Um, uh, this is. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, high loud and uh, recycle and uh, uh, recycle uh, recycle uh, will uh, will water uh, facets will uh, water uh, infinity uh, that can add uh, uh, game uh, في uh, الانترناشنال عند الناشنال كيس ستدي كان ال... ده كان في كومن ما بين الاثنين ان احنا ال... السوشيال كان عندنا عالي في الاثنين بس في الانفارمنت كان في الاثنين لو فاحنا خرجنا بالكونكلوجن بتاعتنا ان البرنسبلز حققت كتير من الاسبكس اللي احنا فرضناها ولكن في منها كتير مش متحقق وكان اكترها انفايرمنتال اسبكس زي السي او 2 ايميشن زي الريسايكلينج سمثينج وين ترونج وذ ذا ساوند نعم في ريكومنديشن بقى Okay, that's enough, uh, Shayme. Please, we have already got your point and your findings. So uh, that. Doctor Ham, we are very grateful that the English was good. We are going to be in the We might have almost 10 to 15 minutes more uh, to present the last paper. But uh, as a general comment, please uh, make sure to manage your time uh, in a better way. 
uh, in any further presentations, you have to focus more on the uh, findings you have brought, the new things that you have came out with, the insights on the, um, the findings that you brought. That brings discussion and brings more comments from the audience and from the session chairs. Uh, the, comment, the only comment I have now is regarding the SDGs. Uh, it's one of the important aspects in the matrix you are trying to come up with. Um, you should have mentioned in the three case study which SDGs were covered. Actually, I have a concern regarding the three case studies, although you mentioned the selection criteria, but in the case you are measuring or examining the effect of waterfront design on the people, you had to, to pick uh, people or a social community that resembles the Egyptian one. You chose okay. uh, India, China, and Spain. I'm not sure that they are so relevant to the Egyptian community. If they were, you had to prove that. So I believe you had to mention, uh, I will uh, complete my point. I believe you had to mention the SDGs that has been fulfilled through each case study. For instance, maybe in India, they targeted uh, num SDG number one, no poverty, maybe, I'm not sure. Uh, and maybe um, num SDG number three was common among the three case studies, good health and well-being, for instance. So if there was a common SDGs among all the case studies, you can just stop and say, okay, so SDG number X, Y, and Z are the most important ones to be fulfilled. And that's what, what should be fulfilled in Egyptian context, for instance. Yeah. So uh, this was just food for thought in order to improve the work you have done. Uh, I move to Professor Alexander. If uh, he has a final comment, please, Dr. Professor. Yes, yes, thank you very much. I also think that the link between the international examples and the Egyptian ones needs to be emphasized much more precise. There are a lot of points which may fit, especially the one from Ahmedabad maybe, and um, also with the climate, because there are big differences in climate. Um, so that link can be elaborated much more. And second point are your um, results, your recommendations. I also there, I think it would be very good if you continue in this research to go much more deep, and much more precise. So that um, when you talk about increasing the water use efficiency, please tell us how that can be done. Um, mm. The recycling, recycling idea and all this, if you research very deep into these different recommendation points, I think then um, you can, uh, this will become um, very, very valuable. So thanks a lot. Uh, thank you, Professor Alexander. Dr. Imen, do you have any uh, last comment, please? Yes, Dr. Laila, thank you very much. Uh, I think we must hurry up to take the last presentation for the time. Okay, okay. So uh, we, we apologize for our audience. We have to extend our session for more, almost 10 minutes or 15 as maximum. Uh, we will now have the, the last presentation recorded. It is transforming existing Egyptian cities into sustainable cities for Tua Hassan. Can you please... Uh, uh, Tua, with us, will you, will you present, will you share your screen or... To us. Hmm. is there. To is uh, are you here in this room? I can see that she's she's yes, with us. Her name. Uh, her name. Yes. Is there. Yes. Okay. I can I can share her screen. Uh, uh, okay. Not not to waste this more time. Okay. We can just make it play. Um, Okay, can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. It's open. Okay, can you hear now the uh, her presentation? No. Dr. You have to stop share. No, no, no. You have to stop share and share again the presentation itself, not the folder uh, including it. Ah, uh, yes, okay. Just a minute. Okay. In the night, I will share the model. The summary minimized. To are you able to share actively in the presentation or not? To a nice, I will share screen, share another screen. Oh, I'll come. Salim.
تو تقدري تعملي برزنتيشن اه طب ممكن تبدئي كان يو شير سكرين اوكي اوكي لا دلوقتي انا كنت مسجله اوديو اوكي اوكي وي ار شيرنج وي ار شيرنج هير فانا معايا خلاص اوكي اوكي okay, can, يعني, uh, can you hear it now دكتور ليلى yeah, yes it's working but i'm not sure about the sound can you okay we can توما ما يعني can you just interfere instead of the video or what لا صوت مش انا انا ممكن اشغل الفيديو دلوقتي بس انا فاتحه من الموبايل انا عندي مشكله انا في في نيو اريا وما عنديش اصلا طيب. نت اوكي okay. عشان okay. كده سجلت اوديو وبعته طب can you hear it now دكتور ليلى no you have to share sound يعني while sharing the file you have to choose the option share sound share computer sound Share, share sound. It's with sharing, yes. With the sharing menu, you have to pick right on the share computer yes. sound. Yes. As the RFDs index for okay, the now can you hear? Show, yes, exist? yes, yes. Okay. Okay, I'll I'll bring it from the from the beginning. Okay. Beginning, yes, please. Okay. Architecture department. My paper talking about transforming existing Egyptian cities into sustainable cities. Actually, existing Egyptian cities face many challenges and problems in all fields, urban, environmental, administrative, and social, which increases with fast urban growth. So, they became unable to save the needs of their citizens and far from sustainability. As the RFDs Index for Sustainable Cities 2017 shows that the existing Egyptian cities are not in the classification, except Cairo, the capital and the most important city in Egypt, which achieved the 9th ninth level among the top 100 cities in the world so it's important to formulate a set of general frameworks that enable the existing egyptian cities to transform into sustainability by using the theoretical frameworks of sustainable cities and the analytical frameworks of some models of sustainable global cities first we will talk about sustainable cities there are many definitions for sustainable development since the appearance of this term. One of the most common definitions is development that meets the needs of the present generation without touching the rights of future generations to meet their own needs. In 2015, the United Nations set 17 sustainable development goals, included sustainable cities and communities in goal 11. This means a city that works to improve the quality of environmental, culture, political, social, and economic life without leaving an obstacle to future generations. It's based on three main dimensions, social and economic development and environmental management. Management. Those consisting of 20 indicators. Several studies indicated that the sustainability of cities requires a large number of measures in specific fields land use, transport and mobility, housing and building, open and green spaces, infrastructure, watershed management, flood management, resource conservation economic development and planning methods. Those differ from society to another and from city to another. Now, we will talk about international best practice in transforming existing cities toward sustainability. Hong Kong City and Frankfurt City have been selected for study and analysis to help existing Egyptian cities transform toward sustainability. Those two experiments were selected based on three reasons. Number one, the advanced ranking of each city in the sustainability index. Hong Kong ranking first, while Frankfurt ranking 10th. In Arcadi Sustainable Cities Index 2017. Number two, the similarity of issue faced each city with the problems facing Egyptian cities. Number three, geographical location. Two different continents. Both cities have sued to implement sustainable cities strategies in proportion to their natural and available capability. So they work it on 
planning methods. They involve the local community in planning process and train technical personnel to understand and implement sustainability plans. Land uses. They identify places for various community uses and link them with pedestrian and bicycle paths. Housing and construction. They achieved a balance between supply and demand for housing units and provided them to suit people without limited income. Transport and mobility. They developed public transportation to suit everyone and used environmentally transportation. Green and open spaces. They perceived and increased open and green spaces to increase the per capita share of it. Fluid management. They built the fluid damas and kept urban development away from the fluids. Watershed management. They protected watersheds, so pollutants were removed from them and their water quality was consistently monitored. Resource conservation. They management resources rationally, followed the policy of recycling and use, and use renewable energy in various fields. Infrastructure. They developed it to suit the growing population. Economic development. They followed the green economy. So, it can be said that transforming of existing Egyptian cities into sustainable cities requires high efficiency administrative system and well training the technical cadres. Involve the local community in setting the development vision for their city. Study the city's weakness to overcome and its strengths to exploit. Now, we will talk about the problems of existing Egyptian cities. Many studies indicated that most Egyptian cities suffer from many problems and challenges in various fields. In urban fields, it suffer from high population density, housing shortage, lack of services and public facilities, traffic jams, deterioration of urban mass, random land use, slums areas, engrossment of agriculture lands. In environmental field, it suffered from decrease in the green and open spaces, shortage of water resources, environmental pollution. In social field, it suffered from high population growth rates, crime and violence, illiteracy, high poverty rates, high levels of unemployment. In economic field, it suffered from weak economic activities, lack of financial resources and direct investment, low levels of income. In urban management and the governance field, it suffered from failure in the development plans systems, lack of integration of the rules of development establishments, lack of qualified cadres, accurate information, enough financial resources and authorities. Now, we will show examples of problems and challenges in some existing Egyptian cities. Slums areas, encroachment of agriculture lands, random land use, environmental pollution. If we comparing the existing Egyptian cities with the global sustainable cities, we show that existing Egyptian cities not achieved any of sustainability strategies and action. By this, we can identify weakness in plans, strategies, systems, and measures to achieve sustainability in Egyptian cities. The most important of them are absent of citizens' culture toward the sustainable cities, the lack of participation of the local community in the development of sustainable development plans for their cities. The lack of trained technical cadres caused an imbalance in uh, the planning The sound is off, Dr. Imin. We can't hear anything now. There is no connection between service with the network okay, it's of back. the train and bicycle paths. The balance between supply and demand for housing units fell, increasing the use of private vehicles and not developing public transportation to suit everyone, neglecting open and green spaces until their per capita share has decreased, failure in the management of watersheds, no respect for the natural environment in the urban planning process, excessive usage of resources and non-use of renewable energies, lack of infrastructure development, 
neglecting the future economic vision of the city when developing development plans. Finally, we suggest several general frameworks that help existing Egyptian cities transform to sustainability as follows. Urban frameworks educate citizens about sustainable cities and how to reach them reducing the randomness of land use develop public transportation to be affordable for all segments of society achieving a balance between supply and demand for housing units develop infrastructure and service buildings to meet the requirements of increasing population density economic and social frameworks consideration of the future Future economic vision of the city when developing development plans. Promote an economy that creates jobs and raises income levels, providing the services that suit all categories of society. Urban management and governance frameworks consider the city capabilities and the resources when developing development plans. Training and preparing technical cadres to understand development plans and how to implement them. Participation local community in the planning process to create a practical development plan. Environmental frameworks consideration of the environmental part in urban development. Prevent open and green spaces encroachment and develop them. Careful management of natural resources to protect the rights of present and future generation. Use renewable energies to receive Receive the environmental and reduce global warming and climate change. That's all. Thank you. Okay, uh, that ends our last presentation for Tua for transferring cities into sustainable cities. And I have only one comment. Uh, Tua, I believe if you are there, uh, you had to start your uh, uh, yes. problem definition or presentation with classification of the typologies of cities because I, I really found myself lost in nowhere with um, sort of standardization for the principles and the way we have oh. to deal with cities, although cities are varied in their types. Yani, I found a lot of different uh, references for this. One of them is classifying cities into 29 type, others classifying them into four types. But at the end of the day, we had to start with sort of a classification. Uh, I found the classifications like emergent city, planned city, uh, cosmopolitan city, global city, and much other uh, classifications. So you have to start your work yeah. with a scope of uh, for instance typologies for cities then you focus on a specific scope that um, would be relevant to the egyptian context again and in fact the egyptian context is full of many types of cities so uh, i believe that was um, somehow vague in the scope of the work although it's very good work and very well organized uh, that ends my comments professor alexander thanks a lot i think it was also really good um topic you are facing. I found the first half of the presentation too general. And the second part, when you switch to Egypt, I found um, very interesting and very important also. All the points you mentioned are really, really relevant. To me, again, the link between the case studies you have, Frankfurt and Hong Kong, to, um, to the Egyptian cities was not, un not clear and also not well selected in my eyes because those cities have very different uh, backgrounds. So they don't have all these problems you were listing for the Egyptian ones. And also, um, yeah, they, are, they have different financial sources to apply all these sustainability points. And um, I think that's not matching enough um, for, the, for the Egyptian city. So maybe I was thinking which cities I would have chosen. Maybe there were some in Brazil or Costa Rica, which is changing in a very good way towards very sustainable states. Um, and then, um, yeah, I think that's the own way, Egyptian way, which needs to be developed. Um, and I think you are on a very good track with the points you mentioned to that. Of course, I don't know, uh, when you listed the barriers, for example, what are the sources? Is it all developed by yourself or where do, do these informations come from? That was also, I was asking. So that could be described more clear in the next uh, round if you continue the research. So thanks a lot. Thanks, Professor thank Alexander. Uh, Dr. Imen, do you have any uh, comment uh, on Tua's work? Uh, first of all, thank you, um, uh, Tuka, but uh, uh, not nothing more than uh, that all researches we are uh, 
we are يعني, are seeking sustainability so يعني, sustain, sustainability is a very very large topic which we must really focus on something you choose one aspect to be applied on a certain uh, space to be more focused this is يعني, uh, just to cover يعني. and uh, thank you very much uh, it was uh, يعني, you need work to go on just uh, thank you thank you Dr. Layla, you are with us. Okay. Dr. Iman, have you, are you done? Yes, yes. I'm sorry, my link went uh, uh, So the, okay. does any of our audience have any comments? Uh, yeah, I need to summarize our session. We had a very fruitful session. We started at 10 uh, with Professor Alexander and Dr. Iman. Uh, in this session, we have the, to uh, overview five topics related to architecture and sustainability. We have passed through the scale of urban scale, starting from the city, transforming it into a sustainable one. Then we move to wetlands and how we can perform uh, efficient lake restoration, uh, moving to the river uh, waterfront uh, again an urban scale and its impact on the social community um, then moving to again social sustainability but on the application of on residential areas and uh, finally we had the, the topic related to uh, application of biophilic design where some people consider biophilia as part of the sustainability or they are interacting together uh, on uh, application on university campuses so that uh, summarizes our session for today uh, i believe we had a very uh, couple of interesting comments and uh, some interesting uh, discussions. I'd like to thank the conference committees uh, uh, and their well-organized uh, system. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Alexander and Dr. Imin for the thank interesting you. session. Thank you, Dr. Well, Leila. It was really it. very nice to and meet all you. our attendees. Thank you very it's much. My pleasure. It really it's very my nice pleasure. to meet you and uh, uh, with uh, Dr. Alexander. And uh, yes. I'm really apologizing for any uh, uh, late, uh, you know, this issues, uh, this technical happens. issues. Yeah. It, yeah. Happens. it happens. All fine. Yes. All fine. Okay. <laughs> yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Okay. I also you. thank everyone, and I hope that you will continue the conference series. And I hope to see you next time in Cairo. Inshallah. Okay. Yes, see, inshallah. You. inshallah. Thank you. Okay. see you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Bye.